welcome to the Job Pod with Job Service North Dakota. I'm Dusty Hillebrand, your host, and we're going to be talking about youth employment on today's episode. But first, uh, I'm going to set this up because it's uh, my guest has got one really cool business in uh, actually over in the Minnesota side on East, in East Grand Forks, but it's you know it's close. Um, so one of my favorite things to do is to watch movies and TV. I've never been a huge reader because I'm always been slow at it. Everybody else would be chapters ahead of me. And uh, I got through it by listening to them talk through the books, and then I could answer the questions when, in school and stuff. But when I get to watch something, it transports me to another place. I love a good movie theater, but I don't go as much um, as I'd like to because well, it's not one of the cheapest hobbies that you can do once you get your popcorn and your pop and whatever the snacks that you want. But some of my favorite memories are sitting in the cheap theaters watching a movie for a buck with my girlfriend, now wife. The seats were so bad, you could feel the springs in your butt cheeks. Um, on my eighth birthday... I got to sit in the balcony of the Empire Theater downtown Grand Forks. Typically, the uh, the old balcony was off limits to everybody, but my Uncle Tim, uh, he was the manager, and that was my birthday present from him. So I got to eat my popcorn and watch one of my all-time favorite movies, The Great Outdoors, with the great John Candy and Dan Aykroyd. And... The rest of them, but I mean, those two are the favorite. And the, the bear where he shoots him in the butt. Oh, my goodness. Just And the raccoons and the leech scene. Oh, it's so many good sauce. So many good spots in that movie. I got to take my son to his first movie. It was just him, a uh, mom with her kid, and I. I don't remember what the movie was, but it was, it was just something special to get to take him. Now when I take him, I have to make sure he doesn't eat all of the whole large popcorn by himself because uh, he will. It would make me sick, but he seems to be just fine. My guest today owns a movie theater. It's a stadium-style seating, great popcorn, and a bunch of theaters to watch your favorite movies. One of the coolest things I've done is during COVID, I got to rent a whole theater for my 40th birthday, and we watched the very first Ghostbusters. When it first came out, I was too young to go do that. Uh, It was a a bucket list thing for for sure. Maybe my bucket list isn't that deep since it was a a movie that I owned. (laughs) But... uh, but we're really not going to talk about movies and movie theaters today. I mean, it's going to be in the conversation, but uh, we're going to be talking about one of the most important parts of my guest business. The youth that man the counters and clean up the theaters. Without these folks, you don't get your tickets and your popcorn. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. My guest today is Penny Stey, owner of River Cinema, in East Grand Forks, and she has a couple other movie theaters, but that's the one I've been to. So welcome to the Job Pod, Penny. Yes, hello. So, again, I love going over to your movie theaters. Uh, You've changed the movie game for me totally. And uh, first, I just want to say thank you for that because, uh, you know, I I probably wouldn't go to – I don't like sitting in the flat movie theaters anymore. I like that stadium seating you guys got over there. Well, thank you. And the movie theater industry has come a long way. It, you, the flat seats and dip, and the old school seats and things like that, that's a thing of the past. Mostly it, we're going more into like luxury recliners, stadium seating, you know, digital projection. Uh, when you probably went when you were a kid, it was like a film. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 35 millimeter film. That went out away like, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. Uh, all digital projection. And then uh, actually last night we installed two laser projectors. So that's the next step. That's the next step in the, in the, for the projection. I remember uh, going up. So I had two uncles, one, they both managed one of the movie theaters in town here. 
and uh, they took us up into the one of the um, projection rooms, mm-hmm. and they showed us how they spliced the the reels together. Um, if they had a split during the movie, and how they could put it together, like you know, it was quick. Uh, but you don't need to do that anymore. Obviously, laser projectors. I'm gonna guess uh, you're not uh, doing that kind of stuff. No, that went away, which is good. I've been in the theater industry for 40 years with my family. Uh, we started out in Black Duck, Minnesota. We're there for a long time, and then uh, we just branched out and got the Faustin Theater, which my brother Kevin is currently running. And then uh, me and my brother bought out my mom and dad like three and a half years ago. It was right before COVID. So it was like 10 weeks before COVID hit, so 2020. Oh, great timing. Yeah, it was great. It was really, <laughs> really great. <laughs> so anyhow, but we we uh, owned the Grand Theater in Crookston and then the River Cinema in East Grand Forks. Uh, we just started the Shire Bar and Grill about 15 months ago, and then uh, we own the River the River Walk Mall. So we're busy. You you are you know and um, I've eaten it a couple of times at, at the Shire, and uh, you know it, it's good food for sure. I love to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, what you guys have done to the mall over there is is simply amazing. With bringing in some really cool. Um, it's something that you don't normally see. Like my kids, we walk out. Uh, we just went and saw the Guardians of the Galaxy. Th- is it three? Yep. And uh, um, luckily for me, the comic book store right across the doors as you walk out was closed that day because I'm sure we would have been over there trying to find comic books to go along with the movie we just watched. Yeah, and it's nice. And we have like 16 rentals. They're all full at the mall. And what we try to do is we have entertainment and food. And then we also have, uh, like, services. And we have some retail and stuff like that. But uh, what you need to draw is people in. So we have, like, a tattoo artist, a massage therapy, and a bank. And and we also have, like, retail uh, boutique stops and, and, like, the Hollywood heroes for the comics. But the idea is to keep it vibrant in there and keep it clean, bright, and full. And and it is. You know, again, it's it's one of my favorite places to go – and, and I don't watch uh, movies in a lot of other places because, well, first off, I don't go to a different town to watch um, movies, typically. Not that I haven't, but I don't try to. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, but it's just, it's so nice. You know, like, I remember when you guys first started opening up over there, the, the tickets were cheaper than the rival in town here. Um, you had, like I said, the stadium seating. Uh, you had great staff. The popcorn was great. Um, you even had like where you could get a hot dog, and an icy. Like I, you know, I might have had an icy year too when you guys first opened up. <laughs> Most people do. <laughs> we like to sell concessions. The movie companies take like sixty to sixty-five percent of all the ticket sales. So the only thing we use to pay payroll and do keep the building maintained and everything is the popcorn. So. Buy lots of popcorn. <laughs> well, trust me, I have just shown up. To thank buy you for supporting popcorn <laughs> once or twice, um, and thank you for having the lids to be for a purchase because you guys fill those buckets up nice and tall. And when the wind in North Dakota <laughs> and uh, Eastern Minnesota blows, uh, you lose popcorn as you walk out the doors. <laughs> yes, you do, but it has come a long way. The theater industry has always supported like the youth workers. And stuff. Uh, It's a lot of times the place where you get your first job. And it's nice to work with the the younger adults. You know, and that's what we're really here to talk about. Like, I could talk about movies and and forever Forever. and ever and ever, right? Me too. Um, But but really, I think when you come into the doors of, of your theater and you're behind the counter, and you guys have a long counter over there, Two big popcorn machines in the one, and I'm pretty sure there's a popcorn machine on the other side. Yep, we have four total. Four total. Mm-hmm. Okay. You've got um, teenagers and early 20s probably. Uh, majority of them are 16 to 24. And so they're the ones that are, are running the popcorn machines and buying, you know, getting the tickets or selling you the tickets, cleaning the theaters. And so um, that that's what we're really going to be talking about here, both because I, I want to. We've done a uh, an episode, and I'm still going to ask your opinion on it. Um, but we've done an episode for the employer side, like how do you get 
job seekers, uh, the youth job seekers to come into your business and make it. And and I think we're still going to talk about some of that stuff because I know with conversations you and I had before, you don't have a lot of empty positions ever. No, nope. most of our staff stay three to four years on average. And a lot of them have been there. Some of them have been there as long as 10 to 15 years. And it's, it's nice. We go by referrals. Majority of our staff are referrals. So the people that are working, they come in, they have a good attitude. And when I have something open, a lot of times I'll ask them if they, they have a friend or a brother or a sister or a cousin or somebody that wants to work. And then they enjoy working together. And so that's how we've, we've been full this whole time. We've never had really a problem. Even during COVID, we were never short. And that's, that speaks a lot to what you guys are doing over there. And of course, I'm going to guess they can go watch a movie once or twice. Oh, they do like their free movies. (laughs) And sometimes I'll let them watch a private show and, and they do, they like working with their friends and they like working with their family. And, but you know, it's young adults, you need to be flexible with their schedule and stuff like that, but they, they have a great attitude. So when you have someone young that comes in, like you said, you, this is some, a lot of time it's first job for these kids that are coming in. How they don't have much of an idea of what the workplace is. Like, I mean, some of them doing chores. I just got after my kids this morning cause they, their chores weren't done. I went home for, <laughs> when I went home for lunch, um, because, you know, one of them decided to sleep till 11.35 and the other one of them slept till 10 and the other one was up at 7 this morning. So, I mean, who knows, right? Yep, they're all over. They're all over. So when you're working with these these young folks, how, how do you help them learn what it means to be a good employee? Well, most of them, you know, they got to show up, you know, which they do. Uh, we have a really, really good attendance rate and and everything. And I am flexible. My schedule's made out like two months ahead of time. So they know when they work. It's not done week by week. Uh, I make it way out ahead of time. They can switch trade, have somebody else work for them. Um, If something comes up, they just need to let me know ahead of time. Uh, But they need to learn how to read a schedule. So we have like an app that notifies them on their phone when they work. Uh, They, a lot of times they don't know how to vacuum or to clean or do things. And so we just walk them through. They work with someone that's been there a little bit longer and kind of the buddy system. And then they also get to know the people working there. So it takes a while. A lot of times they don't even know how to open up a vacuum or start it, you know, and, and that's okay. That's what we're here for. But that's what we like to do. And that's one of the things that when I talk with folks about, you know, what was your first time job like? It was someone yelled at them because they didn't know what to do. And then they had a bad taste in their mouth. I still remember, and this, so this is, I was 16 years old, so this is a lot of years ago. Um, and I've talked about this job on the podcast before. I worked for RDO Equipment in Grand Forks here. And um, I had done something I had never done in my entire life. I, I'm a city boy. And one of the salespeople said, hey, can you come with me tomorrow? I need to get a tractor and bring it back to Grand Forks. And I thought, yeah, I, sure, I'll ride with. Well, well, what he didn't tell me is that I was going to be driving it. Um, from Grafton to Grand Forks. And it's about, I don't know, what, half hour drive by car? A little bit, maybe a little bit more? I ran every stop sign and stop light from the time that I drove out of that farmer's front yard to when I finally got it parked at the shop in town here. And I had no idea what to do with it. So I just let it run because no one told me anything, right? Right. And so the manager comes out, the head manager, and he goes, we're just going to let that thing run out of diesel? And I was like, a, I didn't know what I was doing when I left the uh, farmer's yard. And then when I got here, I didn't know what I, what would you want me to do with it? Nobody said anything. They just said, park it, and then I let it go. No one said, turn it off. I was 16 years old. And, again, that made a big impact on, on me then. So I make sure that when I'm working with people and bringing people on new, that um, I, I'm explaining it. Even though most of our folks that we have here, you know, they're they're full-blown adults. They're not a 16 year old that has don't doesn't know what they're doing. Right. Um, and, and the best way is we have like lists, we have uh, a daily list of things that need to be completed. And then we have uh, someone, there's always like head cashiers on duty and if they don't know what to do or where to go. They just ask them and then they will show them and help them and get them going. 
and and just to to have we just have a nice orderly process of doing things. Uh, I'm a list person. I, I have sticky notes everywhere. I'm the person that just likes to explain everything. Well, and there's nothing wrong with a good list of stuff that you have to do. It, yeah, I hope so, because that, that seems to be the easiest way to make sure the plant gets watered and the doors get cleaned and the uh, the freezer gets cleaned out. And I don't know, there's just things that, that it's easier to have on a list to make sure that they're done every week. So who dusts Bumblebee? <laughs> it's on the list, whoever's working. They have a duster. <laughs> but yes, the, those, there's a lot of cleaning to do. It's a big building. So, And honestly, the kids don't like to just stand there. If there's nobody in there at the moment, they'd rather be doing something than just standing there. Oh, and that's that's how you keep them busy and then keep them out of trouble. And for listeners, they have a, he's got to be, what, seven foot? It's huge. Tall uh, bumblebee made out of? Car parts. Car parts. Yeah, it was made in... Indonesia, and we actually picked up, I think there's five of them from Las Vegas and had them shipped here. They are very heavy. Oh, I can't imagine. The Predator is like 1,500 pounds. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, we needed like a car jack attached to the roof and then to lift them up and over. It was like, it's very, very heavy. (laughs) But it is really cool to go in there and see him. And honestly, for someone who doesn't like dusting, I don't think I'd want to dust him. They're they're unique. Yes, they are. (laughs) Unique is a good way to put it. So... When people are, when the young folks are coming into the work, any workplace, um, and, and I get I get upset when people talk about you know the kids these days. Kids aren't any different today than they are than they were fifty years ago. It's society has changed, right? Like you didn't have a cell phone before, but if you gave a kid a chance to go joke around behind the store. They were going to go joke around buying the store. Oh, yeah. It's the same as having a phone with and now, but now they're just doing it right there. Yep, I just have to tell them to get off of their phone when they're up in front and stuff. Of course, they like to pull it out. They live with their phones. They sleep with their phones. They're, you know, they're always with them, but it also is very useful. It also gives them their schedule. They can look up movies, ratings, times, everything they need to. So it's it's not the, the worst thing, but they do need to put them away when they're up in front. So what kind of advice would you give to those students, those young folks? And it could be 16, like you said, 16 to 24, you know, getting that first real work experience. What are some of the, what's that advice that you would give them as they're entering the workplace so that they stay employed? Um, Yeah, I guess one of the things is uh, make sure you know your schedule. Uh, You're not, you're used to being told, you know, Uh, be to school at this time, or you can just do your chores on this time or whatever. But it really helps to know when you work and to plan out. You know, you're going to have family vacations, and we expect that. Just let us know ahead of time. Don't tell me on Friday that you're gone for the weekend. You know, you got to – that's part of the learning process is to learn how to schedule. Um, I – they try to be like five minutes ahead of time for work. You need to come in with a clean shirt and pants. Uh, you have to pull your hair back, you know, and it's just, it's just one of those things, you know, when you, you, your appearance matters, uh, your attitude matters. And I usually just say, Lee, if you have any problems at home, just leave them at the door, come in and enjoy work. Just have a good day. Sometimes work is just a good escape from some of that stuff. It is just leave it behind, you know, and, and if things come up, we, I work with a lot of young adults. It's okay. We know that sometimes you're going to break up with your boyfriend and you're emotional, or maybe you have a lot of homework. And it's like, if you just tell me what's going on, I will take you off for today or let you come in later or leave early. I mean, I'm okay with that. You just got to communicate. So I guess communication skills. And that's a big one. Being able to, like you said, let me know what's going on. A lot of times I think, and even, I'm just thinking of my kids, and I think about myself, you know, I didn't, wasn't always forthcoming when I had something going on. When I quit that job at RDO Equipment, I literally gave them a week's notice. And like, hey, um, I'm done Friday because I've got football starting on Monday. Yeah, <laughs> and, and that's not uncommon, but, you know, I try to communicate with them um, and try to be open and stuff, and, it, and it's okay. Sometimes it rains, and then... They, their game is rescheduled for Friday. They, that's not their fault. They just didn't know. And so I'm not going to yell at them for that. We're just going to work through it. And then somebody will work for you. And then you pick up their shift on Sunday when you're available. So it's just, 
it's just a just communication. Just be open, talk, let us know what's going on, and uh, be happy to work with you. Communication. It is a very important thing to have, not only as a 16-year-old, <laughs> but as someone who's been in the workforce for 40 years. You have to be able to communicate with your coworkers and what's going on, sharing that information. I'm going to guess, you've already kind of talked about this, but I'm going to guess, you know, when you have someone who's been there for a few years and they know the tricks and the trade, like I keep, I'm going to go back to the day when my, my uncles were running uh, their theaters. You had a new person come on. They didn't know how to splice that film together. So I'm sure I guess that they had to take those folks you know, aside and say, okay, here, I'm going to teach you how to do this just in case, because it always seemed to break in the middle of the important part of the movie. Yeah. I don't miss film. <laughs> I really, I really don't. And you can only play it on one theater. With digital, you can duplicate it, and you can play it in five theaters on opening night and two theaters a week later. It it works really well. But there are things you need to learn. There, You have to make caramel corn or cotton candy or cheese corn. You're not going to go in there knowing how to do that. So we have like a detailed directions on how to do it. You make it with somebody else a couple of times, and then you're good to go. And then you have another another skill. <laughs> and it's a yummy skill. <laughs> it's a great skill. But it's like, who doesn't want to make cotton candy? It's fun. <laughs> oh, I could, I could send my 13-year-old or year old over there right now, and she would love to learn how to make cotton candy. It's one of her favorite things well, to eat. Yeah. And when you're up in front, uh, you're talking to the customers, you know, you just, uh, you greet them, say hello, how are you doing, what movie you want to go to today, uh, thank you, you know, is, is nice, you know, we, pre- you know, just enjoy your movie, anything like that, that, that is very nice and good customer service skills to learn. And, I th- and one of the things I hear from a lot of folks, and not, you know, from mm-hmm. multiple industries, I got friends in the military, uh, you know, they take an 18, 19 year old who is fresh out of out of uh, basic training. And they say, these kids can't talk. And I look at my kids, and they and even I do a, a lot of communication through texting. But being able to uh, learn how to have that, to have a simple conversation with folks at that 16-year-old age or more, um, I think helps break down that communication barrier that they face and ha- be able to, okay, I don't have to have a real in-depth conversation with somebody, but they're not afraid to talk to anybody either. Right, to be open and not criticize. And I always figure I'm the one to set the tone. And so when I walk in, I'm smiling and I'm happy and I'm open. Then my head cashiers, I hope that they will come in with a good attitude, open, friendly, and that sets the tone. If you come in grumpy and crabby, and it sets the tone for everybody. So I don't like bullying. I don't like gossiping. Those are things that I just I just don't like at work. You get enough of that at school. So what I try to do is create a good environment for them to come into. You know, and we're very accepting. We really don't care. You know, uh, you you can be as different as you want. I like unique. It's okay. You know, we like you for who you are. And so that's just one of those things. You know, it's just be accepting. Be open. Set a good in, a work environment. Uh, talk to people. I, you know, I try to chit chat with everybody every day as much as I can. I mean, obviously I'm very busy, but I am in there seven days a week talking, visiting with them, and hoping that everything is going well with them. Conversation I mean, and communication, it's important. And I think it's something that everybody can do a better job at. Um even me, there's days where I don't get a chance to get out and talk to all my staff because I come in and I'm busy all day with meetings and webinars and whatever else. Um, but something we can all be better at. Oh, definitely. Me too. And a lot of times I will talk to the managing part of the staff and then they see me talking to them. And then when they delegate duties to them, they go, oh, that, you know, they know what they're talking about. You know, so it's just like uh, just a line of leadership. You know, I come out and talk to my leaders, and then they talk to the staff, and and I try to talk to everybody uh, very open, honest, and just 
uh, with a good attitude. It does make a difference. And they'll bring in donuts sometimes or fresh fruit. The younger people seem to like fresh fruit a lot. <laughs> They're healthy. They go to the gym. They work out. They ride their bikes. They go fishing. I, I love it. I've got two that love a donut, but I got one where we were just, she just asked me the other night, uh, it, what, what's one thing that you, what's one food that you couldn't live without? And I was like, well, you know, it used to be pizza. Uh, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. And she, well, I said, what about you? Fruit. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, you do eat a lot of fruit. So yep. I could see that. Yep. It's different. <laughs> they, I guess we're, well, my daughter also, is, she eats better than I did when I was younger. And I try to instill those habits in her that, you know, hey, you need to exercise, you need to eat better, you need to sleep at night. And and so I think we have a very healthy uh, generation coming in. I, I think that they have a lot at their disposal with their little phones. Mm-hmm. They're always on their phones and they can look up things and research things and find out. And there's all kinds of YouTube videos. And it's like, it's amazing how much they know. Oh, it, it is, uh, you know. I go on YouTube to find how to fix something or whatever, you know, and, and that was something I had to train myself to do. They just do it. They, they're they so good it. at it. They're so much more tech savvy than I am. And I, and I really appreciate that. I mean, they, they just YouTube things. I'm like, I have no idea how to fix this door. And they're like, Oh, Oh, I'm watching a video. I'll have it done in a minute. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how to do that. Uh, but they're, they're really, they, they have a lot of skills and things that we didn't have. You know, I'm 54, so I'm, I'm a little bit older. And, and I don't, those things I didn't have when I was growing up. You know, you went outside, you played, and you're not allowed in until dark. That's right. what I got. Yep. Oh, yeah. I, I just have to my kids the other day about going outside. Have you, have you been outside today? And because I can remember being. Yeah, they look at you like you grew two heads. Yeah. Like, what are we going to do outside? What? Oh, yeah. I, I don't know. There's, something? Go smell the flowers. I don't know. But do something. <laughs> Get out of the house. Yeah, I know. There was a little meme on Facebook the other day. It's like, well, why did they drink out of the hose? And it was like, because we weren't allowed inside. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had to do whatever we had to do. <laughs> my, my son asked me the other day, hey, Dad, you want to drink out of the hose? And I'm like, I did that enough when I was your age. I don't I'm done. do that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. So, but they... They have so many things they can do. I I just love it. I actually very people think I'm crazy, but I love working with the young adults. I think they have so much potential. Um, they're fun to talk to. They're driven. Um, you think that they're la- they're not lazy. They're volunteering no. to come in shifts to work all the time. They're not working like, hey, do you have anything open? I want to come in to work today if I can. Can I come in early? You know, it's like awesome. Yes, you can. I'd be happy to have you come in. And if they are lazy, if if they, if you're considering them lazy. Have you looked at yourself as an, an employer, as a boss? Right. Maybe you're the problem. Because <laughs> that's, you know, it, it, in a good atmosphere, they want to be there. Yep. In, in a bad atmosphere, uh, do they really want to be there? I keep thinking about, um, and I talked about this on the podcast before, I had, um, I was at an employer, a previous employer from job service, and we had a college student come in to do an accounting um, internship and because of his uh, one of his one of the projects that we were doing was his uncle's company and so he couldn't see the numbers for it because well, I don't know why but they calling so he just sat there he sat there for two months doing nothing I brought him out into our shop like hey you know if you want to do something I can train you in what we got going on out here and he did he came out and he swept the floors for us. I can't imagine how bored he was just sitting there. There are a lot of things. I, if you just ask, and and I always look at them, and I talk to them, and I, we get to know them, and then we're like, okay, you are very sociable. You should be up front. You, are, you can't stand still. You need to go clean theaters. Uh, you are more shy, quieter, maybe have more anxiety. You going back and make nachos and cotton candy and do things like that. If you actually look at your employees, talk to them, find out what they're interested in, they can be cross-trained on everything, but it's best to put them on the things that they enjoy and like to do. And then you put them with the people that they like working with. Yeah. And then they the day goes by fast for them, and it's so much, it's so much nicer. So I guess, I guess I just like to listen to them and hear what they have to say. And yes, they do have to come to work. They do have to be dressed <laughs> proper. 
they do have to uh, stay busy while they're there, but it's like, I can try to make it as interesting as possible. I can about imagine how many conversations you've had to have about you need a clean shirt and a clean pair of pants <laughs> because I've seen what my kids walk out of the house. <laughs> oh, yes. And it's like, yeah, that's a little wrinkled. You want maybe get a new shirt today? <laughs> 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 so it's like, yeah, but that's just part of it. You know, and they, they're like, oh, my jeans are still wet. So I'm running, you know, a half hour late. Cause, and it's like, okay, well, next time maybe put them in a little earlier. Right. But it's like, hey, at least they're making an effort and trying. And I'm like, do that, you know. And I always tell them, don't call in sick. That's also a tip, you know, maybe don't call in sick if you're not sick. I always tell them that. Tell me what's going on. If you have a lot of homework tonight, just tell me I'm okay with that. If you're sick, yes, it's fine. Be, it's okay to call in sick, but don't call in sick and go to the football game. Just say, hey, uh, there's a really, really important game I want to go tonight, and, uh, and uh, can I go? And it's like, Yep, as long as I can make it work, I will. If it's every week, no. Right. But uh, they'll win tickets to a concert in Fargo, and they're like, I just want tickets on the radio, and it's like in two days. And I'm like, okay, we'll make it work. Just tell me what's going on. Most of the kids tell me that they're at the concert anyhow. Yeah. It's like, you know, I, I talk to everybody every day, so it's like that's one of the things, too. I'm like, yes, if you're sick, you need to stay home. But don't call in sick and go to the game or do something like that. Just plan ahead and, or just let me know what's going on. I'll be happy to help you. It's a lot harder to keep the white lie going because you're going to more than likely at some point you're going to get caught. Oh yeah, they will. And then I won't say anything, but maybe on the next schedule, they're on two days instead of three, Mm -hmm. you know, you got to show up, you got to be accountable for your time. And then I'd be happy to put you on. But if you're constantly calling in one or two days a week, then maybe you shouldn't be put on four days a week. Maybe two is better for you and your schedule. And that's okay. I'm not okay. I'm fine with that. And I usually tell them, I don't care if you work one day or four days or five days or six days. As long as you show up for those days, you're good. If you can only show up for two days, that is just fine. Just show up for your two days. That I don't mind. Yeah, just be there because it, we need you. Yeah, be accountable for your time. And it also, it puts stress on the rest of the workers. If you're not there, the rest of the team has to do double time because you're not there because we're short staff. So it's important. Yeah, I've had this conversation with a lot of people over the years because <laughs> it's the absolute absolute truth. Uh, and it's something that I try to instill into my kids now, even though they're not quite to working age. If, if you're, if you're going to be a part of something, be a part of something. Don't. Uh, oh, it's too hot. I don't want to go outside. No, you, you said you're going to be a part of this. You need to go. Yep. It's a, it's a good thing to, to know as you get older. And this actually leads into my next question. How is working at a younger age a value to people? Well, that's like many answers. Actually, there one is uh, you hand your kids 20 bucks to go to the game or whatever. All of a sudden they work. Now they know what that means, like two hours of their time or whatever it might be. You know, it's like when you have, you have to have value for your money. And if they don't know the value there, it's just 20 bucks or 50 bucks or hundred bucks. And, and so they don't understand exactly what that means. That means like, you know, dad put in two hours of work so we could go do this, or you need to have a value for your money. And I think that's good to learn at a young age. Um, Also how to, you know, keep a schedule, you know, how to plan ahead of time for for scheduling. Uh, Just just things like that. You know, time management is good uh, to be responsible for your shift, to be there early, to come in, uh, things like that. Uh, Just to know the value of a dollar, to when you're at a young age, to learn the value of a dollar. And learn how to save. I have a lot of kids saving for like cars or for college or just, uh, they just want personal items. Sometimes they're yeah. just saving up for a PS5. That's awesome. And they, they work for for six weeks to get a PS5 or something like that, a couple of days a week. And all of a sudden that PS5 has a lot more value than if you just bought it and gave it to them. So I have a friend whose son was at the... Uh, Renaissance Fair down in Fargo here last summer, I think. And it was one of those things where 
uh, it was one of the booths where they had like a, a fake knife, right? Mm-hmm. And now this kid had been working all summer to, uh, he'd mowed the yard and they had chores on and they got an allowance. And the thing was, is that this kid uh, blew 40 bucks on his, uh, on this fake knife dagger type of deal. You know, was, he thought it was a, a real one, but it wasn't. And then he went and watched a, uh, what was it? Like one of the entertainers or whatever they're called. I don't know what they're even called. And so at the end of the thing, you know, they're walking around like, hey, you know, can we get a tip? And so they're passing the hat around and everybody's, and so he throws 20 bucks in there. So this, he spent $60 at the, at this Renaissance fair. And, and you know, as a young and you don't make a lot of money on allowance typically. So he spent a lot of weeks allowance on one day on a fake dagger and a, and a show and a show. Mm-hmm. And so, my friend had a conversation with his with his son about, all right, think about what you just did. You worked how many hours for that $60? And granted, if you want to spend your money on whatever, then go ahead and spend your money. It's your money. You did the work. But what do you have to show for that? You gave a guy $20 for a 20-minute performance. That's a dollar a minute that you paid this guy. Right. And it took you how it took you how many times of mowing yard to get that twenty dollars? Have an appropriate tip. Right. And it's nice that he did that, but you know, you gotta think about it. It is very nice. And I and I think um just having that mentality, like you said, you're working for something that you want. I I worked and I I uh paid for uh, part of a, my first car, delivering a weekend paper. And I can't remember how much we made, but it wasn't a whole bunch. And we delivered a lot of papers. Yes, you did. And so when I think back to like how many stupid papers and how many miles we had to walk dropping off these papers on the weekend, every weekend, I know that car meant, even though it was a piece of junk. But it was probably clean. And taken care of because you put in a lot of effort for that car. Exactly. And it got me around town and it, it gave me freedom and let me do the things I wanted to do. Um, so I, I definitely, I, I agree with you. Knowing the value of your dollar, the amount you work. And that only goes towards when they get older too. Like, you know, what do I want to do? How much, how hard do I want to work for my dollar? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it, so it kind of spins their mind that way too, definitely. Yeah. And I have some parents that uh, make the, them put part in their savings and part they can keep. They're teaching them right away to save. And they're like, oh, nope, half of everything you make has to go into your savings account for college. And I'm like, whoa, that, that's a lot for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, some, but some of the parents are really good at saying, oh, you need to put 20% or whatever it might be so that you save that money for your future. And it's a good lesson to learn that, oh, hey, I have 100 bucks. Oh, actually, no, I only have 80 And that 80 is meant for me to spend, and the rest of it is to save for, for my future. And when you get older, if you have that saving in place and you're used to that and you're used to living below your means, you can... When your car breaks, you have the money to repair it. If you move, you have the down payment. If you there's there's if you want to go on vacation, the money's there. But learning how to save at a young age is is to their advantage. You know, I don't know if there's going to be social security or anything like that when they get older. I I have no idea. But to be able to get that on their own, save, and it, I also tell people when they have money in the savings, it it gives them choices. Oh it, yeah, it gives them choices of what job you want to work what car you want to drive, where you want to live. And that is not easy. And you have to work very, very hard for that. We, we grew up very, very poor. So I learned the value of a dollar at a young age. My parents were 16 and 18 when they got married. They were pregnant with me. And so we started out poor. <laughs> we lived in a one-bedroom apartment. 
And then my dad just, uh, he started building houses and uh, we'd always live in an old house. He'd remodel it. We'd sell it. Then we'd go, he'd make some money. And then we'd go buy another old house and remodel it and sell it. So yeah. we learned that at a very young age, how to save, build, and work really hard. And so it, it was good values that he instilled at me at a very young age. I know. I, I, I can understand uh, growing up um, poor. You know, I, I mowed yards every summer um, and, and did uh, s- uh, s- snow removal for some of the neighbors uh and it, it gave me a little bit extra you know cash when we wanted to go to the store to buy a, a lego or something you know i had that that money and i also a lot of that went into savings like you're saying yeah uh, and yeah, when you know. we when we went to go buy school clothes it's like that meant we we're going garage sailing <laughs> I was like, and we tried to hit the, we tried to hit up the good neighbors, you know, the, the good neighborhoods that had good clothes. Cause it's like that we didn't have money for new clothes or new shoes. A lot of times I would wear boy gym shoes and boy jeans or whatever I had to, you know, we needed, you know, it was, that's how it worked, you know? And it's like, Ooh, when we got to go to the department store, it was special. Yeah. And, you know, it was amazing to go into a big Macy store or something like that. And it's like, Oh wow, look at all this stuff. Off. <laughs> when I was a little one, my favorite toy uh, pulled out of a box at the Salvation Army. It was a little matchbox car, you know, and I can't, what it even cost, I couldn't even tell you, but it was, that That was it. Like, that's where, that's where we went shopping when I was, when I was little, you know, and as we got older, we were able to, to not be, you know, the $50, $60 pair of jeans, and I wore Arizonas for many <laughs> well, yeah, and there is nothing wrong if you can afford it, buy it. But, right, exactly. you know, it is it is good to know to start, you know, when I started out, you know, to learn that. And whether you learn it by saving money, whether you learn it because of your circumstances, it doesn't matter. But I wanted to plan for my future at a very young age. I wanted to make sure that I had money in the bank so I had choices. And it does. It gives you choices of where you live, what school you go to, and things like that. And and I wish it wasn't that way, but it is. It is. But I think instilling that idea young only helps as you as you get older. Hopefully helps. Hopefully helps. You know, just, hey, just think about it. Um, I also think job hopping is not good. You know, um, a lot of times if I see they switch jobs every two months, I, I'm not interested. Yeah. Um, I like people that are going to stick around. And then I have found out that the people that stick with me four, six, seven, eight years, they go and apply at a job and the employer looks at them and go, oh, you don't have as many skills as other people, but we're going to take you. I've heard this many, many times because we can train you and you're going to stay. You know, we're going to take the effort to show you how to do this job because we have a good feeling that you're not going to just leave us in six months. You know, you're going to stick around for a while. And it, and it shows them that. And as a young person, that's an easy thing to do because now your buddies are working over here and you want to go work with them. Yeah. So then you jump. And then they go someplace else and you're like, well, this, I don't, I don't want to be here anymore. And then they jump again. That's a really good. It, it happens a lot, but hey, maybe you have to switch jobs a couple of times to find what you're looking for. Yeah, and that's true. Because you don't know. You don't know what you're interested in. Do you want to do customer service? Do you want to more manual labor? Do you want to work with cars? What do you want to do? So that. At a young age, it's, it's fine. Look for what you're doing. But then when you find it, stick it out for a while. Even if it's not great, stick it out because it shows your future employers that you're, you're, you're going to try. I agree. I think, and that's something that when I am working with a job hopper, especially at a young age, I look at that like, okay, did, what, what happened here? And, and when we talk interview skills, we explain it away. Like, I didn't like this but I did like this. And, and now like what you guys are offering is something that I want to do. I could see myself staying here for a long time to learn and whatever else. Cause I mean, not everybody wants to deliver the weekend paper. Not everybody wants to uh, mow yards. Not everybody wants to deliver parts. I mean, those are the things that I did and I'm not doing any of that nowadays. No, nope, well, you just start. I guess I am mowing my own yard once in a while. But. <laughs> That's what the kids are for. <laughs> Luckily, I have a wife that likes to uh, actually enjoys mowing the yard. So That's a strong word. Yeah, I know. And she does. And she like, oh, I don't mind. In fact, I even bought her a, 
the mower that she wanted to do it. I, I had one that worked just fine. She's like, no, I want this. I'm like, okay. Oh, okay. You, you're going to mow? It's yours. It's whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this, my next question for you is, is something important because as a father of three uh, children, I... Well, I, I think I like my freedom, right? Mm-hmm. I like to go, all right, I'm going to go, I want to go uh, camping this weekend. Not that you can just go camping, you know, pick a weekend and go camping anymore because there's so many folks out there camping, but like this is what I want to do. And so I am a little hesitant to push my oldest one into the workplace because if I want to go someplace, I want to go. Now, I know that's not the necessary right idea here, but you know, what advice would you give to parents as their kids start working? Well, I I guess the younger kids, they will probably be working a nights and weekend job, whether it be Hugo's or for me or McDonald's or wherever it is, we are always looking for nights and weekends. And if you're at the lake every weekend, you're probably, they're probably not looking for one of those jobs. They're probably looking for something more Monday through Friday, maybe babysitting or something that can accommodate your schedule. I guess it is nights and weekends. It, it's not going to change. You know, that's the young youth. That's that's where they start their first job. We're the ones that are willing to take them in, train them, show them, work with them. Uh, so, yeah, but if you want to go to the lake, I usually say that that's fine, but give me a heads up. You know, just you can't go every weekend with this job or you can just be a floater for the summer and then come back to work in the winter um that's fine uh, but you know it, it a lot of times it is nights and weekends and so you just got to be able to to work with that and if we know ahead of time that's fine you know hey we're gonna take off the third week of june and the second week of july and that fine that's that's totally fine i just need to know and and just just planning is all i need and i think one of the th- one of the things that we should go back to is you talked about a little bit earlier is that when you do have a child who is going to be in the workplace, set those expectations for savings, set those expectations for, all right, you're going to show up at work and don't let them worm out of it. Because sometimes like it's easy to say, well, I, I just don't feel like going into work. Well, it's fine. It's just a part-time job. It You yeah. don't have to be there. T- take it serious yep. because you are setting the tone for the future you know and then all of a sudden they're 22 and you're still supporting them and you're like oh what what happened it's like well you didn't take your the job serious right you got to start that and say I know it, it kind of sucks but you need to go to work you know that's part of the responsibility and if they decide that they can't work anymore then put in your proper two-week notice and then either stop working or get a different job you know just be respectful and and you set the tone as a parent you know, and it, and it's okay to, I expect them to have things to do. And when they're 16, 17 year old and their parents say we're leaving town for two weeks on vacation to Arizona, they're going, they're not going to be left here alone. I understand that. I expect them to go, but, uh, just give me a heads up. Right. Let me know a little bit ahead of time. Communication goes back to, we talked about this earlier, communication, right? And I, I agree with you, set the expectations and, and Think about as yourself, as an adult, what do you like in the workplace? Do you like when Bob doesn't show up and, and now you, you have to cover? you know he's out at the lake. Of course. He called in sick and you're like, I know he was planning to go to lake this weekend. It makes you frustrated. And now you're going to let your kids get away with the same thing. Right. You just can't do that. And, oh boy, I, I, I see it a lot. And I think sometimes parents are the worst for that. You know, oh, it, it's just a part-time job. Susie will be just fine. You know, what are they going to do, fire her? Yeah, but now Susie's just upset everybody else that because she didn't show up for her, her shift because you said, it's okay. And then at the age 30, Susie's going through job after job because mom and dad. And I, I, the tad bit, you know. Exactly, it, but it's, it's what leads to it. Yep, yep. But it's the same thing, whether it be homework or... Sports, you, when, you're, when you decide to join the volleyball team, you have to show up for practice. If you don't want to be on the volleyball team, don't, don't join. Yep. You know? So if you want a job, put, a, put your good foot forward. Do your best. And, and that's just how I look at it. And as an employer, you know, I don't mind working around 
hockey schedules or basketball schedules or anything like that. I encourage them to get good grades. I want them to be involved in track and golf and whatever they want. I want them to do that. I'll be happy to work around it. Just give me your schedule. They always know their schedule. Just give me a printout ahead of time. And you're actually leading me perfectly into my next question (laughs) is what advice would you give um, other employers who are looking to add young people to their staff? Just what to, what to expect or how do you make it a good place to be? Those, those young people want to stay and and be um, a productive person for that staff or for that company. And, you know, like I said earlier, it's easy for a boss to show up and say, well, all right, you need to do this and then yell at them for not knowing where to park the tractor that they didn't know how to drive. Right. Not earlier. Just expect to explain things, uh, make a clear list of things to be done, uh, check back in with them, make sure that they know. Um, it doesn't have to be you personally, but make sure that there is somebody there to answer their questions, help them, move them forward, and make sure that they're qualified. You know, they they don't have, sometimes I'm saying, oh, just wipe down the Pop Islands or whatever, and they're like, how? And I'm like, oh, obviously they don't know how, you know? And it's just like, you know, one guy just, I was like, wipe it down, uh, how? Okay, get a towel. And then he grabbed a towel, and I was like, well, you Got to get it wet. So he ran under the faucet and started walking away with it. Water just draining along the floor. And I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> oh you got to you gotta wring it out. <laughs> and then you come out and then you wipe it down. <laughs> but it's just like they don't, they don't know. And so I'm just like, uh, it, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> they really don't know. <laughs> I've seen them vacuuming with the vacuum upright and they're just pushing it back and forth. <laughs> And I was like, no, you got to hit the lever thing so the handle goes down. But they don't know. They're just vacuuming with, with it like at a little L shape. And it's like, they don't know. So just give them a chance. You know, they 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 really don't know. They really don't. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's but again, a true story. <laughs> you know, if it's not something they're not, they're not taught at the house, then they're they're not going to know it when they get. Yeah. And when you say restock the water cooler, you you got to take the inventory out and put the new stuff in the back so that you don't just keep pulling the new stuff out of the front and the back stuff becomes expired. They don't know rotation, right. you know, first in, first out, uh, top to bottom, left to right. Um, and that's, those are things that we show them how to do. And then they, then they know. And it's like, yes, they're going to know how to wipe down their kitchen counters and vacuum before they leave, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> those are such simple things, but it's funny how they don't know. They just don't know. So what you're saying is be ready to teach. Be it's, prepared to teach. Yeah, and, and you know what? They do learn. They pick it up right away. They just they just don't know. <laughs> some do. Some do. But you'd be surprised. <laughs> you'd be surprised. Oh, my goodness. You know, that is, that is phenomenal. And, and I can just see the kid pushing the vacuum cleaner they do that happens all the time and it's kind of funny and you know you got to haze them a little bit it's like oh run down to the basement and get a couple cases of popcorn tubs and they look it around and we're like we don't have a basement (laughs) 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 i was like you know you got to have a little fun but then you know you gotta you gotta relate and understand and and a lot of times we'll you know hey you know how are you doing? You know, do you have family here? Where do you go to school? You know, do you have any, do you have a dog? You know, it's like, what's your dog's name? And it's like, oh, did you just get a puppy? It's like, these are people. Talk to them. They have a lot to say. They have a lot of interest, you know, and if they're movies, I would like, what kind of movies do you like, you know, and, and what do you like to go to? And what comedians do you like? Or have you been on the Greenway? It's just like, they have a lot to talk about. You just have to talk to them and ask them questions. And then listen, just listen. I'm not the one that's supposed to be talking. I want to listen and get to know them. That's awesome. I love, that's, that's all great stuff. Oh, I'm going to be thinking about that for a while. I started <laughs> vacuuming my dad. I used to help my dad. He did janitorial stuff around town here for, uh, well, I guess not around town, but for one of the local gas stations. It was, it's gone now. Um, it wasn't just a gas station. It was, well, I can't remember what it was. But uh, my brother and I would go with, Devin would, uh, dust and i would vacuum the offices and the main floor and so 
Like I was vacuuming at, I don't know, eight years old uh, so we can get out of there quicker. And I don't remember if I ever got paid, though. I should talk to him about that. <laughs> I don't know. My dad had me work for tips only for years. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was like, thanks, Dad. <laughs> Oh, parents. Parents are great. There they are. <laughs> uh, Penny, this has been phenomenal. My last question uh, that I ask all the all of our guests is if there's one thing that the listener should take away from today's show, what would that be? I guess if we're talking about youth workers in the workforce, um, they have incredible potential. They are excited. They are driven. They have a good attitude. Just talk to them. Get to know them. I am very excited for what's coming forward. Uh, they, a lot of them went through a lot with COVID and they, like the people coming in and they were shut in and stuff like that. And they do have a good work ethic. They do have a good attitude. Just take a minute to get to know them and they are phenomenal to work with. And just to echo what you said, I, you know, there's a bad, the kids get a bad rap. Oh, the kids don't want to work anymore. Wait, here's a little statistic for those of you who are listening. In North Dakota, ages uh, 16 to 19, the workforce participation rate for that age group is 48.7% in, in 2021. And for 20 to 24, 83.4%. In North Dakota, same year, 2021. That is, you know, I get tired of people, oh, the kids aren't working. They are working, and they want to be there. Like you said, they want to be there. So if you don't have kids that are showing up for you or sticking around, maybe it's time that you look at yourself and see what can I change? How do I change it? How do I keep those kids here? How do I get those kids to walk into my store or shop or whatever it might be? So that they, that they stick around. So, again, uh, Penny, thank you so much for being on the job pod. It has been a great conversation with you. Uh, thank you for having a, an amazing uh, movie theater to go sit and enjoy and let me just transport myself away to another universe. It's a wonderful thing to have. It's something that I hope will always be around. Uh, movie theaters do take you away for a little while. Shut off your phone, go enjoy, and we'll see you at the movies. <laughs> awesome well uh, th uh, thank you very much and uh listener out there tell you what if you're a young person get into the workforce you don't have to do it every day all day you can do it for a day a week you can do it for a couple days on the weekend it helps you develop those skills as you get older parents talk to your kids Set them up for success, how to save, how to be a good employee. And employers will tell you what, you're missing out if you're not putting that stuff into play for your, uh, to get those youth into your, into your workforce. Man, we've got some great kids out there that are just willing and want to work. Thanks for listening. <laughs>